to the Cincinnati Gardens. Let's check out the lineup for the visiting Buccaneers of East Tennessee State. And we highlight their leading scorer, Rodney English, a 6'4 senior averaging over 18 points a game. Four. He's able to get the ball inside and do a lot of damage. Alan LaForce in his second season, his record 34 and 7, and he's buried in among those starters as he gets them ready. The lineup for the Musketeers of Xavier. And we highlight their leading scorer, who is Jamie Gladden, a six-foot junior out of Lorraine, Ohio. Gillen in his seventh season, and he too has an impressive record. He has taken Xavier to postseason play with a record of 145 wins and 51 losses. We talked about it. We just touched on it briefly in the opening, and here why the, here what we meant about them going up down the floor, Clark. Both of these teams love to put it at the basket. Xavier scored 104 in their last game, a loss to Duquesne. And East Tennessee State averages 92 points per game. Greg Dennis jumps it up against Aaron Williams, and East Tennessee State controls. Marty Story. You know, talking to Alan LaForce, he wants his team to reverse the basketball four or five touches before they attack the goal. They took it in there, and Rodney English tried the shot from the inside. No good. Steve Gentry brings it down the floor, and... The ball out of bounds, tried it for the save, was Brian Grant. Jason Niblett, junior college transfer, and the littlest guy on the floor at 5'8". And you will see Greg Dennis at 6'11", out at the top of the key a lot. He's got a good handle. He can put the ball on the floor for a guy that's 6'11". Love to go to his left. English. Marty Story will take the three. Short. Rebound to Williams. And they push it up the floor in a hurry. Grant with the jam. Oh, oh! Big fella threw it down with authority. Brian Grant, a sophomore out of Georgetown, Ohio, playing the post position with the first two points of the game. Into Williams. Has it knocked away? English tried for the save. Into Williams again. And it's no good. And a battle for the rebound. And a foul underneath. Dennis is called for the foul. You take a look at the mad scramble. Niblett gets it inside to Greg Dennis. Alligator arms that attempt and then comes over the back of Brian Grant. The MCC's leading rebounder a year ago did a great job there positioning himself for the carom. Still two to nothing Xavier as Jamie Gladden drives inside. What a move. Some guys are shooters and some guys are scorers, but I think he's both. He is a combination of both, Steve. Has a sweet shooting touch from outside and showed you some moves inside that trip. English for three. And Rodney knocks it down, and it's four to three, Xavier. East Tennessee State is a team that shoots 19 three-point shots a game coming in. Xavier must defend the arc tonight. Marty Story and Aaron Williams battling for it, and the ball out of bounds to East Tennessee State. Pete Gillen, not too happy. Of course, Allen LaForce wanted a foul, and that shot is good. A foul on the play as Jason Niblett knocks it down. He'll have a chance for the three-point play. There's Allen LaForce, whom we could not see earlier. <laughs> yeah, he was buried amongst his players. Now, he doesn't sit much during a game either. <laughs> Here's a key guy for East Tennessee State, Jason Niblett, filling some very large shoes, although the player who had those shoes was rather small in size, Mr. Jennings, the all-time leading scorer for East Tennessee State. Pressure by East Tennessee State, but Xavier did a great job of throwing over the top. Jamie Gladden and a whistle away and away from the ball, a foul underneath. Oh, 
Jason Niblett. Foul on Jason Niblett. Only the second team foul. Gladden shot no good. And what a rebound as getting way up high was Calvin Telford. Inside and Dennis jams it home. Now eight to four and Marty Story with a steal. Telford with a jam. Man. Oh, oh my. Shades of Dr. J. What a flush. He high jumped seven feet in high school and told me today he did it simply by jumping and laying down over the bar. And he showed us some of that explosive leaping ability. Marty Story's been all over the place defensively. He almost had another steal, but knocked it out of bounds, and Xavier retains possession. And Talford going for the steal, knocks it out of bounds. Key juncture here, Steve, simply because Xavier has had a problem handling the basketball. Alan LaForce told us he wouldn't know if his team was ready to play by the way they defended. So far, they've clearly been the aggressors defensively. A lot of pressure on defense. You know, you look at Xavier, Steve Gentry, a young point guard. Going to have to handle that pressure effectively to give his team a chance to win here tonight. Jamie Glatton fouled as he went inside. The basket no good, and he will go to the line for two. A foul on Jason Niblett. Jamie Glatton, the team's leading scorer. Nice ball fake here. Pete Gillen talked about that in the shoot-around. He said, look, guys, the Buccaneers love to block shots. When you get inside, show them the ball, they'll lift and you'll be able to get yourself to the free throw line. And Jamie Gladden, one who was paying attention at the shoot-around. For Niblett, his second, third team foul. And Gladden misses the first of two. The way these guys have gone so far, they need a free throw just to get a break. Get a quick blow. And in a game like this, that's when you try to suck that oxygen in and get that second blow because it's going to be intense all night long at both ends of the floor. A little full court pressure here by Xavier. East Tennessee State by five. Niblett, three-pointer no good. And Aaron Williams comes down with a rebound for Xavier. Greg Dennis going up just a little too early. I would expect Xavier to try to attack East Tennessee State inside. Maurice Brantley trying to drive to the basket. Foul call number 34 of East Tennessee And the foul is on Marty Story. Nice little ball fake to get by English by Mo Brantley and then Story just in the wrong place at the wrong time. With his body turned the, the wrong way, he picks up the foul. But Xavier has a size advantage inside. You know, you look at East Tennessee State's front line, and Greg Dennis, their biggest player at 6'11". Rodney English is 6'4". Mart Mart Marty Story is only 6'4". So that means one of those two guys is going to have to defend a 6'8", 6'9", guy in Williams or Grant. And Xavier look is expected, at least from the coaching staff, to try to go inside and, and make East Tennessee State foul. Bramley made one of two, 10 to six, East Tennessee State, and Dennis open can't get it to fall. The rebound underneath put back up by Marty Story. He can't get it to fall, but he's fouled. So far, Xavier, when they've gone inside, Clark has gone with the little guys penetrating. It's really been East Tennessee State that's given it to the big guys inside. Well, they're very active and athletic. And you know, you talk about being a good rebounding team. Both of these teams are, even though they aren't real big teams. And typically, your best rebounders are smaller, more active players. And East Tennessee State has quite a few of those kinds. The free throw shooting has not been stellar so far as Story missed the first. But makes the second. A five point lead for East Tennessee State. And as you see, just about 16 minutes to go in the first half. And a whistle and an offensive foul called against. Was it Brantley? I think it may have been Gentry. They're going to call him with the chicken wing. Watch the right arm. There it is. He got that wing out on the back of Jason Niblett and picked up the, the offensive foul. And for Gentry, that is his second personal foul. Jason Niblett for the Musketeers, number 25, Michael Hawkins. Hawkins for number 12, Steve 
into the game for Xavier, number 25, Michael Hawkins. Replaces Gentry. Hawkins has great quickness, leads the club in assist out of Canton McKinley High School. Has struggled with his shot, though. It'll be interesting to see what kind of start he gets off to in terms of shooting the ball because he has the ability. The pass not handled by Rodney English, and Xavier brings it the other way. And a foul. No basket. Hawkins went to the free throw line for the shot, and Eric Palmer, who's into the game for East Tennessee State, ran in front of him. Palmer only five foot six. Coming right at you here, folks, Michael Hawkins. They call him Hawk. Gets a step on Palmer, who tries to draw the charge, unsuccessful in doing so. You know, it's tough to draw charges against guys that are as shifty and as quick as a Michael Hawkins. He is quick. Just watching him in the shoot around today, of course, Xavier worked pretty hard in their shoot around. It was almost like a full practice. They were cutting and running plays, and Hawkins was flashing some speed. They were very intense this morning, and I talked to a couple of the assistants, and they felt like it was nothing out of the ordinary for them. 15:42 to go in the first half. East Tennessee State leading Xavier 11-8. Take a look at this play earlier in the ball game by Talford. This is what you call a surprise flush. Aaron Williams had no idea that Mr. Talford was going to send it home. That's what you call a forever flush. I'm telling you. Forever remembered by Aaron Williams. Calvin Talford drafted out of high school by the Philadelphia Phillies to play baseball. Look at the difference in the field goal shooting. And East Tennessee State, although shooting under 50%, leading the game by three, 11 to eight. And also the turnovers. Plus three for East Tennessee State. A three-pointer by Eric Palmer at five foot six. He knocks it down, and it's 14 to eight. East Tennessee State must have small guards cornered. I guess so. <laughs> five six and five eight. They had a great one in Mr. Jennings, the all-time leading scorer. Nice pass, but Aaron Williams misses the stuff. Talford with the rebound. Dennis with a good move gets fouled before he can get the ball off. And it appears as if the foul will be on Brian Grant. Into the game for East Tennessee State, Jerry Pelfrey. And we'll bring you up to date on scores of games in progress and any that have been completed throughout the night. For Brian Grant, his second personal foul. And Greg Dennis will shoot two. Well, that, now that could be a problem for Xavier. Grant coming off a 26.16 rebound game last Saturday against Duquesne. Really a physical presence inside, and I think Pete Gillen going to give him a break now with those two fouls. And this is where bench play becomes so critical. You have Larry Sky, Larry Sykes, rather, a 6'10 freshman out of Toledo into the game, and Grant will take a seat. Sykes, number 54, and again, East Tennessee State with a pressure. Full court pressure. Man-to-man -man pressure. They don't look to really trap the basketball. They just look to stay in your chest for 40 minutes and eventually wear you down. Not only do they do that defensively, but they wear you down by pushing the ball at you offensively, so you're getting it at both ends. Aaron Williams goes to the hoop. Sykes with a follow, no good. Williams again, no good. And finally, Dennis gets the rebound. And I'll tell you what, they're getting it into the big guys, but nothing's happening. You've got to finish those. Dennis will take a three, no good. Gladden with the rebound for Xavier. Michael Hawkins. Boy, he had a lane to the basket. I thought he was going to take it. Sykes finally gets the layup to go down. The nice thing about that is they had three trips, three tries last possession, didn't score, but they went right back to it. That's where they can hurt East Tennessee State is in the paint area, and they have to stay with their game plan. Eventually, those shots will fall. Nice spacing here by East Tennessee State. They do a nice job of swinging the ball, 
from side to side. English takes it to the hoop and scores over Maurice Brantley, who's one of Xavier's best defensive players. Brantley now on offense. And he'll take a three, no good. Rebound by Talford, ahead to English. And he will be fouled, and preventing the shot was Hawkins. A good hustle that time by Michael Hawkins to force English to make free throws. Poor shot by Brantley leads to the run out. English ahead of the pack, but Michael Hawk Williams, Hawk Hawkins rather, able to get back into the play and commit the foul. Silver, silver for number 11, into the game, Tyrese Walker, number 34. Maurice Brantley will sit down. English will shoot two. English, a rock solid performer last year on that 28 and 5 Buccaneer squad. Average 13 points and six boards a game. He makes them both and he'll get a rest. Into the game. Leslie Brun, number 33, will replace English. You know, both of these teams like to play the up-tempo game, so therefore you're going to see eight to ten players from both teams on the floor, and neither one of these teams has really gotten the production from their bench that they would like to get on a consistent basis. Sometimes that can keep you from playing that style of game, too. You get reluctant to put those guys in. Exactly. And Xavier, a young ball club, still looking to establish itself. Jamie Gladden with a fine move off of a pick by Williams. No good. Williams with the rebound. No good. And a battle for the ball, and it goes out of bounds to East Tennessee State. It went off Larry Sykes, who was diving for it, fighting with Jerry Pelfrey. Well, this is a 10-point ball game right now in favor of the Buccaneers, and there have been six gimmies missed inside by the Musketeers here in the first seven minutes. Pete Gillen obviously concerned as you saw a shot of him a moment ago. Talford shot no good. Rebound by Hawkins. Ahead to Gladden for the layup. Xavier gets their running game in gear and cuts it to an eight point East Tennessee State lead. No basket. Dick Paparo, one of the umpires making the call. The crew tonight, Lenny Wirtz is the referee, and Dick Paparo and Donnie Gray are the umpire. English back into the game for the Buccaneers. Leslie Brown will sit down. Also back in, number 11, Greg Dennis. And he will give Calvert a break as Calvin will take a seat. Here goes another three, too strong by Eric Palmer. And Xavier will bring it up. Boy, they got the shot they wanted, though, and Pete Gillen and his staff worked on that play extensively yesterday and in today's shoot-around. Gladden penetrating. And I think Frizzell Silvers may have been called for reaching in. I'm not sure. No, it's on English. Rodney English picks up the foul. I think Aaron Williams really has to beg for the ball in there. Well, he got it, and he put it in. They have got to go to him. That's what Pete Gillen was saying. He's got to become our go-to guy. Well, that's a two-sided coin in that the guy who's supposed to be the go-to guy has to beg for the ball and work to get himself in position. Aaron Williams sometimes a little too passive in the post. Eric Palmer bringing it up for East Tennessee State, and it won't fall. Tipped away by Williams and controlled by Therese Walker. Gladden again on the fast break. 
And now it's a four-point lead, 20 to 16, with 11.24 to go in the first half. Pelfrey shot no good and a foul called underneath. Timeout on the floor with 11-12 to go in the half. Xavier coming back. Xavier in the midst of a 6-0 run. And anytime you have those kinds of runs, you have to talk about good defense. Nice pressure on the shot by Talford. Michael Hawkins comes up with the board, pushes it ahead, has his head up, and finds Jamie Gladden streaking to the goal. Jamie Gladden, the leading scorer with seven points for Xavier. Rodney English also has seven to lead East Tennessee State at this point. 20 to 16, East Tennessee State leading, and each team shooting 40% from the field. Inside, Brian Grant couldn't get it to fall. Pretty good defense that time by Greg Dennis. Challenged the shot, may have gotten a piece of it. And Dennis takes it to the hoop, no good. Rebound by Therese Walker. Steve Gentry back into the game for Boy. Xavier. Sykes in the ground. Well, that's great high-low action. Nice strong post up by Sykes to get it inside, then the little dump over inside to Grant, who had good position. And now it's just a two-point lead. Boy, good matchup here. Walker and English, both guys with tremendous hops. Great bounce off the floor. Walker going for the steal and an easy basket for English. And it's back to a four-point lead. We're near the 10-minute mark in the half. Gentry for three. No, it's only a two. He had his foot on the line. Very close, but just the two. This is a three, no good. Knocked away out of bounds, and a foul call. Well, you can tell by his body posture, he's guilty, Brian Grant, that's three. This is game one of a doubleheader tonight, game two at 9.30 Eastern time. Louisiana Tech and South Alabama will be coming your way. So stay with us. Doubleheader action tonight here on ESPN. Brian Grant with his third person will sit down. Well, you know, that's the risk you take when you don't automatically sit a player with two fouls in the first half. And I don't totally agree with immediately sitting a guy if he has two. You have to feel out the game situation. But anytime you, you roll the dice, sometimes they can turn up um, not in your favor. Jerry Pelfrey, whose brother John plays for the University of Kentucky out of Paintsville, Kentucky. I talked to Jerry before the game, and actually this morning at shoot-around, and um, said who had the sweetest stroke. And he said, I'd like to think I can play with John. <laughs> but right now he's struggling a little bit on the shooting, about 40% from the floor. He will sit in favor of Marty Story, number 34, back into the game for the Buccaneers, who lead it by four. Gentry. Oh, what a move. But it's knocked away by Story with the quick hands. Story is really rock solid. He doesn't give you a lot in numbers. But you miss him when he's not on the floor. He keeps the ball alive there. English to the hoop, blocked by Williams. Damian Hodge for three. Damian Hodge into the game, a freshman out of Franklin, Tennessee. It's 27-20. And Gentry goes to the, uh, the basket, but no basket, as Hodge will be called for the foul. Well, if, if you play for the Buccaneers, you better be able to shoot that three. I mean, he pulls a guy off the bench, hasn't played an awful lot, and he's looking right at that three-point shot. Back into the game, number 22, Jamie Gladden. Michael Hawkins will get a break, and Gentry will be at the line. 9.07 to go in the first half. East Tennessee State leading by seven. 
you know, the pace hasn't really been as frenetic as we thought it would be. Part of that is because of the fouls. There have been an awful lot of fouls, actually 15 fouls called already. Both teams will be shooting the rest of the way here in the first half. And that, too, can be a product of the running game because guys get out of control easier. Exactly. Get out of position, maybe get a little winded and start reaching. Gentry makes them both, cutting the lead to five. And Xavier with pressure, but the Buccaneers beat it, and Story takes it to the hoop and has it knocked out of bounds. Good defense by Gentry. Here you see Gentry being beaten. Really shouldn't happen when you've got a guy with his quickness defending the ball that makes a nice recovery to prevent the basket. Talford for three. Calvin Talford out of Castlewood, Virginia. Knocks it down. 30 to 22. Xavier has to be careful here to make sure they maintain contact. Boy, Dennis just picked clean and takes it all away, but the shot no good. And the foul is going to be called underneath. And I believe it's on Gentry. Nope, no foul on the play. Knocked out of bounds by Gentry. English, no good. Gladden with the rebound. East Tennessee State does a nice job of pressuring the ball. That's why it's been a little tough here lately for Xavier to throw it inside. Foul called on Damian Hodge. Foul call number 32 of East Tennessee State. That's Damian Hodge. And he's called over immediately by That's Alan LaForce. That's the second on Hodge, who has not been in the game that much. Gentry will be at the line. And now Eric Edwards will come into the game, a sophomore out of Wilmington, Delaware, at 6'8 and 230. He will replace Larry Sykes. Edwards is a big body that's capable. Last year he had 14 points and 10 boards against Dayton here on ESPN. There you see the total of 16 fouls already. Gentry hits it. And I don't think, Clark, you may disagree, I don't think the referees are calling ticky-tacky stuff either. I think there's been some body banging going on here. Well, both teams play aggressive, an aggressive style of defense, and the officials have been right on top of it. They're doing a fine job here. And that's been a problem for Xavier, especially in their game against Duquesne, their last game. They sent Duquesne to the line 35 times, and a lot of the fouls were lazy reach-ins. They've had only a couple of those tonight. Trying to get it through the pile. Damian Hodge traveled as he was double teamed and trapped in the backcourt. And he'll turn the ball over to Xavier. Pretty good solid trap here. And Hodge just slides that. I think it was the left foot that he slid in his attempt to bust through the trap. Jason Niblett, number three, back into the game. And Damian Hodge will get a rest. Xavier has cut it again from 10 to 6 points. 7.52 to go in the first half. Let's see if they can swing it and find Aaron Williams inside. They found Eric. Not good spacing, though, between he and Edwards. Edwards will take it from here, and I think Dennis may have gotten a hand on it, but what a follow. Nice follow by Tyrese Walker. And again, he shows how he can get up. Xavier with some pressure, but the Buccaneers handle it. English is shot no good. Talford underneath. What a move by Talford. He came out of a pile, and Walker can't run down the pass. How about the offensive rebound by Talford? He went way upstairs amongst two or three other players, came down with it, then made an incredible shot. 7.09 to go in the half. A timeout on the floor.
Well, before we get to all of that in January on ESPN, tomorrow night ESPN will be just down the road, less than an hour away, Louisville and Kentucky. Talk about some bragging rights and some recruiting power, huh? Both ranked in the top 25. Tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, Danny Crump, of course, coming off a losing season last year, looking to get back on track. Louisville and Kentucky, 8 p.m. tomorrow night, Eastern, here on ESPN. East Tennessee State has led most of the way, 32-26. And Xavier without a three-pointer. East Tennessee State well on their way to the 19 three-pointers they average per game, already having taken 11. Dennis with a nice move, but he couldn't get the shot to fall again. But East Tennessee State will retain possession under their own basket. Greg Dennis has a lot of stuff to his game. He can shoot the three. He can put it down. He showed you a nice little move, even though he didn't get the completion. It has a lot of versatility. Needs to get stronger. May have a chance to play at the next level. Calvin Calford with that big leap with no good on the shot. Xavier controls as Aaron Williams comes up with it ahead to Gentry. Knocked away by Greg Dennis. And he will take it himself, and he is hammered. As he went to the hoop, Tyrese Walker said, no way. You see coming right at you, Greg Dennis, looking to get up and flush it, but Tyrese Walker says, no, you'll earn those from the strike. That's a good, solid foul. You know, I watched the tape of the Duquesne-Xavier game where there were a total of 212 points scored, and there were far too many easy layups given up by Xavier. And I'm sure that was a point of emphasis with the coaching staff to not allow any one-on-zeros, any breakaway layups. And we've seen that two or three times already tonight. Exactly. For Walker, his first personal foul, and Dennis, with a good touch, gets it to fall. All set, done. These are fairly soft rims here. You'll get the roll. I knocked down a few after the shoot arounds today, but I usually shoot them so cleanly I don't have to worry <laughs> That's about right. that. You that don't roll. touch the rim. You That's don't right. know what the rim's like. That's right. That's right. Six points now for Dennis. He's really been active defensively. That quickness and long arms has gotten his hands on a lot of ball. Aaron Williams. A little mismatch defensively, and Xavier took advantage of it. Still a six-point lead for the Buccaneers of East Tennessee State. Marty Story looking for some help. Jason Niblett listed in the media guide at 5'11 is really barely 5'8. Yeah, you know those program heights can be a little bit exaggerated on occasion. English inside with a nice move. Rodney English. Xavier now two or three times has tried to hit the home run ball or pass and has ended up with a turnover. English now leads with 11 points as we bring you up to date again on what else is happening in college basketball. Sykes back into the game and Eric Edwards will sit down. I think Xavier a little too impatient looking for the quick score they've got advantages inside but they have to be patient in order to take advantage of it. they're forcing it just a little too much Giselle Silvers into the game as Marty Story comes into the paint and makes the shot now it's back to a 10 point Buccaneer lead Xavier has cut it down to as low as two but that's been it Brantley with a nice pass Hawkins underneath to Williams, and he has it knocked away. Fouled by Marty Story. See, that time Xavier had three or four touches, a little penetration, and then the nice find by Hawkins, and they get themselves to the line. If they do more of that, they'll have a chance to really try to hurt East Tennessee State inside. And that is the 18th total foul between these two teams, the 10th on East Tennessee State here in the first half. 5.05 to go in the half. You know, you talk about having patience offensively. 
but impatience usually the sign of a young team. They look to get the quick kill instead of executing and moving the defenders. And that's one of the problems Pete Gillen has had. He's got a young team. I mean, he doesn't have a senior on the roster. Jerry Pilfrey back into the game, and Marty Story will get a break with two personals. And Xavier with some pressure of their own. Nibble it ahead to Pilfrey as they get it over the timeline. Pilfrey double team. Good job. And open underneath is English. And Pilfrey tied up by Williams for a jump ball. The possession arrow goes to East Tennessee State. Whoa. Xavier may be getting a little break there. Tough pass to handle as Hawkins tries to get it inside to Williams. Well, Williams got some of the orange. He had an awful lot of pelt for his neck. Xavier gets a break there. He'd get a takedown if it was wrestling. Williams with a nice bank shot. Eight-point lead at 40-32. And Williams now with eight points. Jason Niblett for three, no good. Pilfrey and Williams battling for the rebound. And the foul's gonna be on Aaron Williams. Well, Pelfrey had pretty decent inside position. If you're an offensive rebounder, if you can get next to the defender, you don't have to get inside of him. If you can be next to him, you're in great position. There's the shot by Niblett. And see, Pelfrey, he actually was inside of Williams, and therefore Williams went over the back and picked up the foul. The funny thing about it is if Williams had handled the ball cleanly, it slipped out of his hands, he probably would not have been called for the foul. Good eye, Steve. You're exactly right. Critical little juncture here. East Tennessee State has basically maintained a six to ten point cushion. Xavier hasn't been able to really get close and put any pressure on on the Buccaneers. Xavier has to maintain contact. East Tennessee State would love to push this beyond 10 points if they could before halftime. They lead by 10 right now. Pilfrey with four points and they turn the ball over. Xavier turns it over. And that again has been one of their big problems. Maintaining control. You can't afford numerous empty trips. I mean, you've got to get a look at the basket. If you get your shot that doesn't fall, that's one thing. If you don't even get a shot off, that's what makes coaches gray right there. That's right. Of course, Pete still got that nice red hair going. He didn't have any gray yet, anyway. Still, Xavier's had their share of adversity already this year. It started before the season began, actually. And this is why they had the 21 on there. That's for Chris Mack, a kid who got hurt in the first nine minutes, nine seconds of an exhibition game, and the BW on the sneakers of the Xavier players stands for Brian Williams, a student manager who's still in a coma after being in a car accident. Chris Mack, a guy they really miss, and for Brian Williams, our prayers and thoughts with him and hoping for his speedy recovery. Xavier turns it over again. English. Two on two, Calvin Talford has it knocked away and it goes off Talford. And Xavier will get it back. And Pete Gillen trying to get him to settle down a little bit. They've turned the ball over three of the last four times down. They now have 11 turnovers here in the half and they're about to do it again. They do. Well, they're just not squeezing it. I don't know if the ball is slippery or if they just aren't concentrating, but they're just not handling the ball cleanly. Well, Pete Gillen's going to get Steve Gentry back in the game at point guard to try to control things and settle them down a little bit. You know, we started to talk about Chris Mack, and he's a guy. Oh, I took a steal, and Hawkins came out of nowhere. There's that speed we were talking about. Oh, he split two defenders 
he never gave up on the ball. But to finish that thought about Chris Mack, he's a guy who played two years at Evansville, transferred, sat out last year, and was going to give the Buc give the Musketeers an element of leadership and experience. And when he got hurt during that exhibition game, it really was a blow to the team because there you take a look at Chris. He's a guy that's played in the conference, has played well. He brings experience and fire and another big body in. To lose him right away is really a major blow to this um, Xavier ball club. You got to lose that haircut, too. Well, I kind of like the haircut. Do you like it? Oh, sure. I like the uniqueness. You know, guys need to step out and be bold and be a little different. The only way you and I can do it with blue blazer attire is through our tie. That's right. So basketball players have to do it with their hairstyle. That's true. Or their games, one or the other, or both. Well, the old saying is, if you've got the, if you got a good game, I guess you can have a bad haircut. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. He's got a pretty strong game, and it's really interesting. He may only have one year left to play, actually a junior, and he's missing this whole year. And I think he's going to try to appeal to get another medical red shirt. But since he already sat out, you're only allowed actually two seasons of sitting out. Gladden can't get it to fall. Tipped away. Pilfrey controls, but he's on the line. And Xavier will get it back under their own basket. Jerry Pelfrey with the effort. Here's what's coming up at halftime. The dunk fest back in 1983 and the tournament scores and highlights. We're down to two minutes and 15 seconds to go in the half. Xavier has cut the lead again, but East Tennessee State still by seven. English has shot no good. And Xavier with the rebound as Gladden really battled to control it. Well, he's one smooth operator. Stays within himself. Plays an awful lot of minutes, though, and you wonder about him maybe wearing down, although the halftime break coming up shortly. Aaron Williams has it knocked away by Pelfrey, but he's fouled in the process. When, Z when Xavier has been able to do this, get the ball inside, something good has happened. They've either, either gotten good shots or they've been able to draw fouls. So if they can just be patient enough to move the ball and handle it strongly, they're going to be able to do some good things inside. One thing I guess you concern yourself with as a coach of a young team like Xavier is that when they do get down, that they don't stay down, that they do come back but under control. And pretty much they have not let the game get out of hand. And there have been a couple of instances with a 10-point lead where East Tennessee State could have run away from it. Exactly. Williams, who's a pretty good foul shooter, makes it. Both teams shooting well from the line. East Tennessee State 77%. Xavier 80% so far. Aaron Williams bulked up considerably this summer. Worked hard in the weight room. And if he can just transfer the strength that he gained into an aggressive mentality, he could be a major, major force in the MCC. He'll get a rest with 10 points as Dwayne Wilson, number 52, comes in for him. Eric Palmer back into the game, number five for East Tennessee State at five foot six. English double dribble. He lost control of it. Turnovers and fouls have been the story of the first half. We've had 20 team fouls in this half, 10 on each team, and close to 20 turnovers total as well. And we've still got a total of 81 points on the board. Part of it because of the fouls, obviously. Less than a minute and a half to go as Gentry goes to the baseline. No good. Gentry gets the rebound. And trying to pass, he elbows in to number 33, Leslie Brun. Let's take a look. Here's Gentry on the initial thrust. Doesn't get it. The ball's kept alive by Brantley. Now let's take a look. He jumps in to Leslie Brun. Tough call, but I think the right one. Gentry will take a seat next to Chris Mack with three personal. 115 to go in the half. And they turn it over again. 
Dwayne Wilson comes up with it. And another turnover. Well, I just, I don't know, Steve. Maybe I'm trying to bail these guys out, but the way they're handling the ball, it just seems to be slick. I mean, it's happened at both ends of the floor. I really like the pro game ball. It's got those thick seams on it. But <laughs> Easier can't, to hold on to. Yeah, I can't get into changing the ball. Now we've had 23 turnovers in this half. Dennis going to the hoop. And an offensive foul as he jumped into... Brantley. Maurice Brantley guarding him underneath. Take a look. Brantley, that was close. Dennis didn't really have a chance to turn completely. Now, and Sykes hammered him after the fact, too. Xavier with 13 turnovers, East Tennessee State with 10. Five seconds to go in the half. Hawkins trying to use that quickness inside of Gladden, swatted away by Dennis. English and underneath for the layup, Leslie Brun. 20 seconds to go. Good job here by Brantley to check the clock and pull it out. They had cut the lead to five and now it's seven. Need to make sure they get the last one. Maurice Brantley shot is short, Dennis with the rebound. And he traveled. Boy, the Musketeers dodge a bullet there. You don't want to give the opposition a chance to get the last shot when you've got the ball with the shot clock off. Reminder at halftime, back to the studio for a look at the 1983 Dunk Fest, as well as tournament scores and highlights over this holiday week. Inside, Larry Sykes trying to go strong to the hoop gets hammered. Four seconds left in the half. They're going to have to break out the ice packs at halftime. They won't no. be able to wait until after this one. Man, there's a lot of contact taking place out there. First personal foul on Trezell Silvers, 6'5 sophomore. And in the game for the last few seconds for Xavier, Tyrese Walker. Michael Hawkins will sit. Four seconds left to go in the half. East Tennessee State leading by seven, and Xavier is Larry Sykes at the line. with four points. East Tennessee State will try to get it off in a hurry. Eric Palmer for three at the buzzer. It hits. That'll pump up those Buccaneers as they take it in at halftime with an eight-point lead on this last second three-pointer by five-foot-six-inch Eric Palmer. Well, he's just in the open court. Get, let's it go clearly in time. The three-pointer. Puts a dagger in the heart of the Musketeers. Eight-point lead at halftime. The studio after this. Jamal Walker and Mike Davenport, two guys that were averaging 28 points a game between them and also gave this team tremendous leadership. So they haven't found a guy to step forward yet, although Steve Gentry continues to play better and better with each game. Jamie Gladden, their leading scorer, only had seven in that half, but he put up 22 in the second half against Duquesne Saturday. So. And, and on the other side of the ball, East Tennessee State looking for somebody to take the uh, leadership as well with Jennings graduating. Exactly. They feel like Niblett is moving closer and closer to that leadership role, but it has to evolve from within. The players have to have confidence in that one guy that runs the show. And that's Niblett with the ball as East Tennessee State goes with the same five that started the ball game. Talford almost loses it. English almost has it taken away by Walker. Therese Walker starting the second half, and that's the change as English gets the ball back and knocks it down, and it's a 10-point lead again. 50-40. He's got 15, and 
When he catches it in the paint, he's almost unstoppable. Tyrese Walker from the baseline, no good. Grant and Williams both going for the rebound. Williams can't get it to fall. Walker there for the follow. And that's what happened to Xavier in the first half, except they weren't able to get the third tip in to go in. Good effort that time, and persistence pays. They need to take advantage of their size inside here in the second half. East Tennessee State looks like they want to swing the ball from side to side, make Xavier work a little bit defensively. Nebla driving in a great shot as he put it up over the outstretched arms of Williams. Gentry. Gladden shot too strong. Grant with a rebound underneath. Puts up the high one. Boy, nice no call there as Grant made contact with Dennis. He's playing with three fouls. Very important for him to go as long as he can without picking up the four. Back to an eight-point lead as they get it into Greg Dennis. He's left-handed, and he puts it up with the right hand. No good, but a foul called underneath on the rebound. Well, I don't know if there's a more intense coach than Pete Gillen. I watched him practice yesterday, and he's all business out there, constantly challenging and motivating. Harping on numerous things that they need to get done. Well, when you have a young team, you've got to teach all the time. That's right. That's exactly right. Marty Story picked up his third personal foul. Xavier will inbound it. You know, talking to the coaches from Xavier, they feel like their team just hasn't been tough enough. They haven't been aggressive enough. Haven't reeled in as many loose balls as they need to. They really worked the last few days in terms of getting after loose balls and just playing a lot harder and a lot more aggressive. Mark Grant inside for the jam. There's some aggressive play. As he is strong to the hoop, he gets fouled and will have a chance at the three-point play. Nice look here by Tyrese Walker inside to Brian Grant. Send it in, big fella. Talford tried to get there, got there late. Nice look here, good catch. When you catch the ball cleanly, you can do damage inside. For Calvin Talford, his first personal and the three-point play converted by Grant. And it's back to a five-point lead, 52-47. Xavier keeps pulling up close, and East Tennessee keeps pushing him back again. English may have gotten away with the travel, but he didn't get the basket ahead to Gladden. He's one on two, and so he will wait. Gentry all the way across to Tyrese Walker. Grant looking inside for Williams, knocked away, and Dennis comes up with the ball. Grant already with five points here in the second half. Marty Story, he's open. A long two, no good. Tipped away, and Williams has it. English tried, and now Grant or Dennis comes up with a steal. Story inside to English, knocked away by Walker, who can really get up. <laughs> it's a little wild. And furious right now. Williams inside. Xavier coming back. It's a three-point lead. And a timeout as Tyrese Walker may have a contact lens problem. But see, this is like two fighters going at it. And Xavier now going to the body of East Tennessee State. They are vulnerable in the paint area. Nice look here by Trent Gentry. Williams running the floor. And he's got good hops, the ability to get off the ground. When he catches it that close, he'll make it count. Walker get his eye back in. There you see Lenny Wirtz taking a look, the, the referee. Donnie Gray just came over and let us know it was a contact lens that caused the stop and play. Alan LaForce has a lot of guys on his team from South Carolina. You may wonder why. Well, one reason is because he had a very successful high school coaching career in South Carolina. And he saw some of the best players in that state. And this being his second year at East Tennessee State, he's hooked up with some of those guys and brought them to the mountains to play ball for him. I don't know if there's any profession where networking is more important Maintaining those ties and contacts at all levels, especially at the high school level, 
if you're a college coach. I mean, when you can do that, you can get a pipeline into certain areas and end up with some very good players. That's right. Knocked out of bounds, and East Tennessee State will retain possession. East Tennessee State has only one rebound this half. Xavier has seven, so Xavier has really picked up the slack on the boards much more strongly here in the second half. English inside, nice shot. Well, he just lingers around that baseline. Good hands, a nice soft touch inside. Mark Grant puts it on the floor and has it knocked away. Finally picked up and stolen by Trezell Silvers, who was quite tenacious. Calvin Talford inside, and Therese Walker knocks it away, no foul. it the other way down by five less than 16 minutes to go in the game knocked away by story who's tried for the steal now he's fouled by calvin talford well, i tell you what tyrese walker has done a nice job he's had a couple of putbacks a couple of nice feeds that's his second personal foul 15 47 to go in the game we'll take a break tennessee stayed up by five yeah, the Buccaneers having a good time as East Tennessee State leads by five. And coming up next, Dan Patrick and Larry Conley are in South Alabama. Louisiana Tech in South Alabama, 9.30 Eastern time, game two of our Friday night doubleheader of college basketball here on ESPN. Xavier with the ball. 15.44 to go in the game. Look at the rebounds. Zero in the second half for East Tennessee State after they controlled the boards in the first half. Gladden's three-pointer, no good. Giselle Silvers with the rebound, and English into the front court. Story with a nice look inside. Alfred really hasn't gotten many looks. Gladden doing a nice job on him. And then he has to punch it back out to Marty Story. Alan LaForce has elected to sit Greg Dennis on the bench for a moment. And Tyrese Walker getting up high to block the attempt by Jason Nedlet. Greg Dennis coming back into the game. You see Tyrese Walker stretching out and getting up to deny Nedlet the three. English inside to Dennis and a good move for the reverse layup. So Greg Dennis struggled in the first half, only one of eight. Michael Hawkins back into the game, number 25 for Xavier. Brian Grant inside. And they may be going in there more to the big guy. Oh, I think they will. They've done a nice job here in the second half of getting it inside and getting points off of it. Rodney English is shot too strong, and Walker with or Hawkins with the rebound. Hawkins always has his head up. As soon as he gets a rebound, he's got his head up looking up for it. Tyrese Walker, no good. Calvin Talford with the rebound. <laughs> well, I, would, I would think Greg Dennis and Calvin Talford would look to try to get themselves off offensively. Short, Williams with the rebound. Hawkins looking ahead. Gladden inside has it slapped away. Trezell Silvers, Williams off to Grant, no good. Tipped away, Gladden control. Boy, Gladden may be passing up a shot, really looking inside. I'm sure Pete Gillen and his staff talked about throwing it in the paint. That's only a two as he stepped on the line, a long two nonetheless, and it's a three-point lead for East Tennessee State. Boy, when you're on that line, you've got to make sure those dogs don't touch it. I mean, it, you're giving up a chance for another point if you just are conscious of your feet. One inch makes a lot of difference. Jason Niblett has gone cold, and the outlet pass overthrown by Williams. Too tall for Hawkins. And Xavier will turn it over, and into the game, Larry Sykes will give Brian Grant a rest. Sykes, number 54, 
the freshman played well in the first half. Brian Grant did a nice job there to play seven minutes and not pick up his fourth foul. Turnovers are now up to 29. But by minute, we've had less per minute in the second half than we had in the first half. Yeah, it slowed up just a bit. We were more than one a minute in the first half. <laughs> 26 in 20 minutes. Nice anticipation by Therese Walker. He's having a heck of a game for a guy not scoring an awful lot of points. Now Gladden takes the three. He's their go-to guy. He's the guy that wants the shot when they need him most. It's a one-point game as East Tennessee State calls a timeout. 12.35 to go in the game. It's tight now. East Tennessee State led by as many as 10 on numerous occasions. Now it is a one-point game, and Xavier has come back behind Brian Grant, who's had seven points here in the second half for a total of 11. Aaron Williams still leads with 12, and for East Tennessee State, Rodney English now has 17 to lead all scores. East Tennessee State needs someone else to step up and produce some points, most notably Calvin Talford, who has the ball now, or Greg Dennis, who struggled through a poor shooting night thus far. And Aaron Williams, working on Greg Dennis, has taken over the rebounding. East Tennessee State has not had many rebounds in the second half, and Williams now has 11 in the game. So Xavier starting to Move on the board. Dennis out working travel. Alan LaForce doesn't like that one. Greg Dennis, as we talked about in the first half, loves to drive left. That time lifted the foot before he put the ball down. Expect Xavier maybe to try to free up Gladden for a shot here. If they can't get it inside, Gladden is their option. They get it inside to Sykes. His hook shot almost blind, no good. And he fouls over the back of Trizel Silver. A little foundation lane on that one is Sykes rammed it up against the window. I don't even think he looked. It looked like he just threw it up there. That's his first personal foul. And while the turnovers have diminished here in the second half, so have the fouls. That's only the fourth total team foul between these two teams here in the second half. About this time in the first half, we were looking at bonus free throws for both teams, I think. Greg Dennis took it to the hoop, and he was fouled again by Sykes, his second personal. And that is the second foul on Xavier this half, both on Sykes. Well, Pete Gillen just looking to get some solid contribution from a guy like Larry Sykes. It's another big body as you take a look at Tyrese Walker. And this young man has really played an outstanding ball game. His point totals aren't that impressive, but he's made a lot of nice passes. He's been good defensively. He's had an outstanding all-around game. He's replaced by Maurice Brantley as Dennis knocks down the first of two. Dennis, an outstanding shooter, 78% free thrower for his career, 51% field goal shooter, only nine points tonight, and not near 50% shooting tonight, but he's got good mechanics and nice stroke. Sykes with a rebound, and Xavier will push it up the floor now, down by two, and under 11 and a half minutes left to play. Hawkins trying to get inside, and Free banks it in, it comes out. Sykes puts it back up and gets it to fall. <laughs> Calvin Talford for three, no good. We're tied at 57. Xavier has come all the way back inside and a foul called on Trizel Silvers as he pushed on Brian Grant. 
Xavier's doing a much better job of swinging the ball and getting it into the paint area. Grant had Silvers locked up. Pretty good foul there because Grant looked like he would have scored. Silvers will come out of the game, and Jerry Pelfrey, number 30, comes back in. Really a tough matchup for the Buccaneers inside. They just really don't have an answer for Grant or Sykes when you talk about size and width. Sykes trying to go baseline. And a foul on Pelfrey. Pelfrey can't believe the call. It's his third personal, and Sykes will go to the line for two. Sykes using that ample lower body of his may have gotten away with the little hook and then just got himself along the baseline and back inside. You know, it's one thing to have that wide lower body. It's a totally different thing to know how to use it effectively. And Sykes did a nice job getting position inside. Gentry back into the game for Xavier. young man has given a solid effort off the bench and forced into a little earlier duty than normal because of Brian Grant's foul problems in the first half. I think Dick Paparo went down and asked the East Tennessee State cheerleaders not to bang their megaphones on the floor while guys are shooting free throws. And they, of course, did not like that. Sykes makes the second of two. And Xavier leads by one. They have not led in this game before this moment. Well, we need to mark it down. How does East Tennessee State respond now to being down? Although it's only one point, what kind of shot do they get in this possession here? A little high post screen. One of their favorite plays to try to get Nibbler a jump shot. He can't make it. Ahead to Hawkins, and the tip no good. And Niblett comes up with it. Still battling. Calvin Talford offensive foul. Take a look, Talford gonna try to shoehorn along the baseline. Gentry right there. And Talford guilty of lowering the shoulder. And Gentry <laughs> on the ground loving it. Talford's third personal. You would expect this East Tennessee State team to maintain their poise and their composure. They're primarily a senior-oriented team. They start four seniors. So you don't expect them to lose their cool here at this critical juncture. Remember how tough Xavier has been at home. Brantley tried to penetrate, not to the floor. Xavier has won 90% of their games in this building since they started playing basketball here. I'd call that a home court advantage. Yeah. <laughs> and under Pete Gillen, it's been even better. And this is his seventh year. And about 93%. They're also coming off two straight losses. One was here against Duquesne. And the other was on the road, so that bad taste of losing sometimes is as good a motivator as any. Maurice Brantley drops the first of two, a two-point Xavier lead. Look for Xavier probably to get into their pressure. They like to do it after made free throws if Brantley can get this one up and down. He does, and they do. They're showing a little, actually just man-to-man, -man, one, just man-to-man, -man, no real traps. They're staying straight man-to-man -man now. Eric Palmer back into the game. And a three-pointer by Marty Story. And that reties the game at 60. You don't expect him to be the guy looking at the three. Xavier only has two team fouls, and they are in the bonus 
as there are 17 fouls and now eight against East Tennessee State and Story, I believe, is going to be called for this one. Foul call number 34 of East Tennessee State. Well, this could be major. Xavier, as you just pointed out, Steve, still with four fouls to give before East Tennessee State starts shooting. Xavier shooting 71% from the line as a team coming into tonight's game, but they've been much better than that tonight. The Hawk goes out and Gladden comes back in. Marty Story now with four fouls remains in the game. Maurice Brantley at the line. Well, I wish some of our viewers could have been at shoot around this morning because Pete Gillen, as the players shot free throws, was constantly talking about how they did a great job in their last game. We shot 77% from the line. It's going to be important tonight, guys. Fingertip and follow through. And it's certainly proven to be so, so far. Brantley with five points. Aaron Williams back into the game, and Larry Sykes gets a big hand as he sits down. And now Xavier with the pressure. They lead by two with 8.50 to go in the game. Eric Palmer to the floor. There's the team foul situation we were talking about as East Tennessee State has put Xavier to the free throw line and Xavier has fouls to give and they just gave one. Aaron Williams picks up his second personal foul. That's really that's a tough team foul. Excuse me, Steve. That's really a tough matchup for Aaron Williams out on the floor with Dennis, who's pretty agile, has decent quickness. Eric Palmer, a little strong on the three-pointer. Gladden went for it, but it went off his foot out of bounds. And East Tennessee State's Buccaneers will get it in front court. Rodney English back into the game for the Bucks. And Marty Story will get a rest, well-deserved, as he has played with great intensity. Palmer at five foot six. And Dennis has it knocked away, stolen by Williams. Xavier leading by two, 8.15 to go in the game. Maurice Brantley, a long two. Xavier with their biggest lead of four. English looking inside for Talford and over to Pelfrey. Good pass by Talford. He felt the double team and the help from the weak side. Calmly found Pelfrey on the weak side. Nice pass by Williams to Brantley cutting to the basket. Xavier just playing a whole lot better here in the second half. They've stepped it up about three notches. Palmer driving too far underneath. Gentry the other way, intercepted by Pelfrey. English down the lane. No call as he runs over Williams. And it's back to a two-point Xavier lead, 66-64. Well, I tell you what, Rodney Ingers is as fine a 6-4 finisher inside as I've seen. And he just got called for a foul that he cannot believe. Or can he talk the official out of not giving him? And Gentry will go to the free throw line as Palmer goes out. And Jason Niblett comes back in. That's the third personal foul on English. The ninth team foul. Brantley, Brantley at the line. And he won't get the bonus. Gentry control taken away by Niblett. Talford can't hang on to it, but English comes up with it and gets the basket. Went to the left hand. Oh, my. Oh, oh. He is a scoring machine. He's tied the game at 66. Rodney English, you've got a full season to go. Don't show us everything tonight. <laughs> he almost has. Braden. Gentry from the free throw line. Gentry for Ziggler. 
Back to a two-point Xavier lead. Gentry now with 10 points. That's about what he's averaged over his last four ball games. Pelfrey looking for the three now drives nicely. Jerry Pelfrey now has nine. Boy, both teams doing a fine job of executing here the last four minutes. We're tied at 68. Bradley for three, no good. Williams tips the rebound over the basket. And he's trying to get everybody to believe that it was Dennis who tipped it out, but not so. Timeout on the floor. 5.48 to play. We're rocking now, tied at 68. There are your vitals. We're all tied up at 68. 5.48 to play. Why must you be able to use both hands in the paint, young players watching? so you can be effective when challenged. Rodney English right-handed. Go to the left hand, young fella, and kiss it off the window. The only way he gets that shot off is by going to the left hand. Aaron Williams was all over his right hand. A little trickery in the paint. The great players can do it. Xavier still with fouls to give as we are tied at 68. East Tennessee State has led by 10 on more than one occasion. Oh, here's Dennis, guarded beautifully by Sykes, and Williams tips it away. But Talford controls for East Tennessee State. Pelfrey to the hoop over Williams, no good. And English gets the rebound and is fouled. Uh, foul number 54, Xavier, that's Larry Sykes. Larry Sykes called for the foul, his fourth foul. Well, he's, he's a body that Pete Gillen can afford possibly to lose, although he's played extremely well tonight. He allows Gillen to save Brian Grant, though. Pelfrey looking for three, and Williams jumped out on him in a hurry. English shot knocked away. Greg Dennis with the follow. Xavier now finds himself down again as East Tennessee State takes a two-point lead. He has a foul call. A foul on Jason Niblett. And he wants to plead his case with referee Lenny Wirtz. And Brian Grant will come back into the game for Xavier, replacing Larry Sykes, who leaves with four personal fouls. Well, Pete Gillen got just what he wanted from Sykes. He got a few points, some banging, a few boards, but more importantly, a foul or two that Brian Grant may have picked up was instead used on Sykes. Now with 4.44 left to play, Hawkins at the line. And Michael makes the first. Here are the foul troubles right now in East Tennessee State with both Story and English having four. The major concerns. Of course, now Sykes has four as well for Xavier. And Grant had three at the half and still has three. Boy, Gladden has done a nice job on Calvin Talford tonight. Talford has been a force on defense, but not so much on offense. We're tied at 70. Launching one is Jason Niblett. And the Buccaneers lead by two. Back and forth we go. Gladden driving the lane, no good. Dennis made him change the shot, and Williams saves it. Hawkins keeps it from going in the backcourt. Gladden's three-pointer no good, and Brian Grant is fouled by Greg Dennis. Third personal foul on Dennis. Excellent effort here by Aaron Williams to save it and then put it up for grabs, and Tyrese Walker able to keep it alive. The Hawk to Gladden. He doesn't get it down, but here comes Brian Grant. See, with a mad scramble like that, you lose track of who you're guarding, who you're supposed to block out. So offensive rebounding lanes are wide open. 
and Grant did a nice job there to get some space and get the second opportunity. Grant now with eight points here in the second half. You know, he had knee surgery back in November, November 6th to be exact, coming off a 26.16 rebound game against Duquesne. The coaching staff feels like he's back into his rhythm and groove. He certainly has been here in the second half. We are tied again at 72. Chris, some drama there, and we may be, the way this game is going in the second half, set for that same kind of drama here at the end. Pressure from Xavier. We're tied at 72, 350 to go in the game. A couple of the big name guys we talked about at the top, Jamie Gladden, Greg Dennis have not really had strong offensive performances, but I wouldn't be surprised if those two guys step out of their doldrum here down the stretch. Calvin Talford may be a guy to do the same. English inside as he got away from Tyrese Walker. He's been as steady as flowing water all night long. Walker from the free throw line. Too strong. And the littlest guy out there nibbled at 5'8 with the rebound. I'd like to see he and Palmer on the floor together. <laughs> then Niblett wouldn't be the littlest guy out there. If Palmer's only 5'6". Salford looking inside. He tried to get it to Dennis, and Dennis went the other way. Hawkins brings it back for Xavier. He tries to throw it inside. It's knocked away, but Xavier will retain it with 39 seconds left on the shot clock. Xavier wants a timeout. Pete Gillen calls it. With 2.46 to play, and Mississippi or East Tennessee State up by two. You're looking at the Musketeer, but it is the Buccaneers that lead by two. And coming up next, Dan Patrick and Larry Conley will bring you the action. Louisiana Tech and South Alabama, 9.30 Eastern time tonight. Of course, it is 9.30. <laughs> but as soon as we're through. We'll be sending it on down. Williams inside, too strong. But Xavier controls. Tyrese Walker got it. Hawkins looking for the three. Now he penetrates and gets it to Williams. See, his quickness allows him to break down defenses. And even though he wasn't decided initially on the pass, just by being inside, he was able to find Williams. Boy, miscommunication there at that time. Gladden left Talford, and that allowed him to get loose on the backside. Just poor communication. You know, this Xavier team is pretty much a quiet team. So you take a look now. Look at Jamie Gladden defending Greg Dennis, and Brian Grant had no idea he was supposed to switch. He gets there late, prevents the layup. But that is his fourth personal foul. Exactly. And Calvin Talford will be at the line, shooting two. The game tied at 74 with a minute 54 left to play. You know, I started to make the point that this Xavier team is a quiet team in terms of its personalities. To be good defensively, you have to constantly chatter. You need to be talking to one another. And when you're a quiet team, miscommunication like that can happen. Pete Gillen constantly trying to get them to communicate with each other communicating with them. Talford hits them both. East Tennessee State by two. Xavier right back and Hawkins takes it to the hoop. <laughs> oh my, what a shot. Speed though, quickness allows you to get inside. He can really burn. Niblett trying to set up a play, get the offense to move. But well, they've got it spread. They're probably going to look to maybe give Niblett a high pick or let him create on his own. Shot clock down to 12 seconds. English off 
the glass. Rodney English taking it to the hoop again. East Tennessee State again leading by two. One minute to play. English with a steal. Tyrese Walker with the foul. No basket. Oh, oh, oh my. What a second half Rodney English is having. This anticipates the long cross-court pass. Walker doesn't do a good job of going to the ball. That allows Rodney English to come up with the steal, and he'll shoot free throws when we get back. Timeout with 54 seconds left to play. Just 54 seconds on the clock, and when they have expired, we will send you to South Alabama, where Dan Patrick and Larry Conley are standing by. Louisiana Tech and South Alabama, the second half of our doubleheader of college basketball for you tonight. Pete Gillen has gotten Xavier squared away, and you can bet that Allen the Force has done the same for East Tennessee State. They lead by two. English is at the line, the leading scorer in the game with 25 points. A chance to increase the lead, but he misses the first. You know, Alan LaForce told me yesterday that you'll like Rodney English, Clark, because he really can score. Well, you know what, Mr. LaForce? I love Rodney English. He misses them both. Williams gets the rebound for Xavier, and they can tie the game or take the lead with a three. The clock down to 45 seconds to go. Alfred on black. He's the guy Xavier would like to have the ball to take the shot. Glenn has it knocked away. Tyrese Walker, no good. And a foul underneath called on English. Rodney English picks up his fourth personal foul with 33 seconds left to play. And Tyrese Walker will be at the line for Xavier. And a chance to tie the game. Walker's only a 50% free thrower. Two or four coming into tonight's game. Walker with just four points tonight. And he misses the first. Pete Gillen said it. It may come down to free throws. And they've really done an outstanding job knocking down a, a high percentage of their free throws thus far, but the later it is in a close game, the bigger they are. He makes one of two. It's a one-point East Tennessee State lead with 33 seconds to go. Pressure by Xavier. And a foul by Michael Hawkins in the backcourt as he bangs into Jason Nisbet. And Niblet. Niblet will go to the line, and that's the third personal foul on Hawkins. So there's no doubt about this one. He reached in for the ball, but that was more like a cross-body block than anything else. One plus one for Niblet. Niblet shoots free throws at 77%. But that typically is during the course of a game. It becomes a little tougher late. He will get the second as he moves it back to a two-point lead for Allen LaForce and East Tennessee State. 29 seconds remaining in the game. Timeout call by the Buccaneers by Niblett after he makes the second. It's a three-point lead, 80 to 77, with 29 seconds to go. Now the wheels are turning on both benches. Well, I think if you're Xavier, there's plenty of time on the clock. You don't have to shoot a three here. You've got time to look at a good two-point shot, maybe something inside going to the basket where you give yourself a chance to be fouled. Otherwise, you just have to take the best, best shot available. Now, what do you think East Tennessee State's going to do? Are they going to pressure here? Or are they going to just get back? I would think they might just try to play solid man to man. In this situation, you're so afraid of fouling that sometimes you become too passive. And it might not be a bad strategy for East Tennessee State to put some full court pressure on, but you open yourself up to maybe getting lost in the scramble and maybe creating a good open three-point shot 
for Xavier on this possession. So I would think they'd settle back, just play good, solid man-to-man -man defense in the half court, and then be ready to challenge the shot, block out, and board it. Look at the way Xavier has really taken over the boards. It was well into the second half, almost midway through, before East Tennessee State even had a rebound here in the second half. Well, they really exerted their muscle inside, did the Musketeers, and that's why they've been able to pair a 10-point lead, actually took the lead here in the second half on a couple of occasions. And you know, everybody knows Jamie Gladden is the clutch guy. But in this situation, if you want a three, I think you might have to go to one of your other guys, maybe Steve Gentry, somebody the East Tennessee State may not be expecting to shoot it if you're going to shoot the three here. Locked down to 19 seconds. Gentry with a three, no good. Calvin Talpert with a rebound. He's tied up and he's fouled by Michael Hawkins. Well, that was great execution. Excellent execution. Penetration. Kick back out. Gentry had a great look at it. Hawkins' fourth personal foul. Just 14 seconds remaining on the clock. And Calvin Talford will have an opportunity for some big, big free throws. Pete Gillen wants a timeout. We'll be back to the Cincinnati Gardens for the final 14 seconds. East Tennessee State leading by three. Free throws, how big they loom here in the final seconds. And East Tennessee State's Calvin Talford will be at the line. Shooting one plus the bonus. And... Allen LaForce, Buccaneers, already leading by three. And you can read Allen LaForce's lip saying, no foul, don't foul. Calvin Talford, well below his 17-point-per-game average. And as he did a few moments ago, he calmly knocks one down and gets the bonus. Hasn't had the best of games tonight, but he is some kind of athlete. He makes them both. It's a five-point lead. 14 seconds to go. Xavier will have to score quickly. And Gladden is fouled by Talford before he can get the shot away. Nine seconds remaining on the clock. Fourth personal foul against Talford. Well, you talk about not following instructions. I mean, don't foul. He just said it right before the free throws. And... Talford commits the foul now, which is the last thing you want to do when you're milking a five-point lead and looking to expire the clock. Instead, you get a couple of free throws here if you're Xavier. And East Tennessee State now has the pressure on them to get the ball inbound. them both. The Tyrese. Tyrese Walker will come back into the game replacing Hawkins. And a reminder, we're going right to South Alabama as soon as this one's over. Xavier fouls immediately. Pelfrey fouled by Gladden. Now seven seconds remaining, and that's about all they could do. No question about it. If they didn't get the steal immediately, they had to keep as much time on that clock as possible and force the free throws. Gladden's first personal foul. Michael Hawkins back into the game and Tyrese Walker out as the offense-defense strategy is being worked by Pete Gillen here as he's desperate with just seven seconds remaining. Down by three, but Pelfrey can push it back to a five-point lead. Now, originally, the officials were signaling two shots, and now Lenny Wirtz, the referee, runs in and tells Dick Papyro, nope, it's one plus one. He misses it. Grant with the rebound. Five, four, three. Steal by Pelfrey. And that'll do it. East Tennessee State 
comes into one of the toughest places to win on the road and in a great ball game especially here in the second half defeats Xavier 82 to 79 for our ESP